Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. We haven't heard that for a long time. Love it. Ray Ferraro uh, coming up. All our guests today, including Ray, sponsored by Passant Motors. May Day. It's May Day's at Passant Motors. Purchase a vehicle in the month of May and choose one of three great promotional options. May Day's only at Passant Motors. Learn more at B-A-S-A-N-T-Motors.com. Uh, the old Hartford Whalers playing a Game 7 tonight, Carolina, against the Rangers as we bring in uh, Ray Ferraro from ESPN and TSN. Ray, long time no talk to. How are you, sir? I'm well. How are you guys doing? Very, Good. very well. Hey, before we get into a, a game seven, first year of the NHL's contract with the ESPN and TNT, the numbers are, are very, very strong. What's what's your uh, what's your theory there? How come? I I think it's a couple things. Um, one is you have uh, our network, which of course is a twenty four hour sports network. So there's all kinds of outlets, all kinds of opportunities for the game to be promoted and to uh, to be shown for games to be on you know different networks they're building a streaming platform uh, but I think it's the the constantness of a 24-hour sports behemoth that really helps the second part to that is is Turner TNT and so they've you know their their scheduling during the year is that one night that Wednesday so they can pile everything into it on the one night mm -hmm. and they do a terrific job the way they're doing it. So I think you've got two networks doing it a little different. Um, but there is, you know, rather high profile to it. But to me, one of the keys is, and this has never happened in the NHL because there's never really been two networks doing this at the same time is there's a cross promotion to it. So yeah. ESPN promotes the TNT games, TNT promotes the ESPN games. We promote their broadcasters. They promote ours. Um, it's the game that we're promoting. It's just you got to find it on a different channel. So if if they do well and we do well, the game does well. Yeah. And I think that's been a big part. So far, so good. Anyway, the Rangers can stop uh, this Carolina trend of being unbeatable at home tonight, Ray? They can. Um, okay, so two things stand out, Donnie, for me. It's like, just from strictly, you know, everything's about gambling these days, right? Mm, Every time yep. you turn on your TV, somebody <laughs> yeah. tells you a different way to look at a game. But how how long can you win every game at home? Like, yeah. with no other knowledge, like, eventually you're going to lose because teams don't win 41 games at home. Mm. They've already won seven. Like, seven in a row, and they haven't won on the road, which to me is just unfathomable, that they could – be that good and then that bad, home and away. Um, the Carolina, that is. The second part of this is the the one clear difference in in the teams is is Igor Shesterkin. Is he's, he's just phenomenal. I've done I think eleven Ranger playoff games now, and he's outside of the two in Pittsburgh where he got shelled and they pulled him. Um, since then, he's he's his save percentage is nine thirty seven. Stops the puck almost ninety four percent of the time. Like it's so in one game, you've got a goalie in Carolina that got pulled last game. That's playing his eleventh straight game. He's only done that one other time in his career. Let's say Anti Ranta, one other time, and that was nine years ago. It, against Shosturkin, if I got to pick one guy in one game, I'm taking Shosturkin. And you're doing uh, Game 7 uh, tonight, uh, Ray. Hey, well, what have you noticed? It's, it's your uh, old franchise, the old, one of your old franchises, the Hartford Whalers. But what have you noticed about the Carolina franchise as a whole? Team, fans, uh, uh, the city, all, all that through the years. Uh, first, first thing with the team is, like, they're fast and they're fun. Like, man, they, they, they're entertaining the way they play. That's the first thing. The second thing is used to come in here. They had 4,000 season mm -hmm. tickets. So each night they're trying to sell 13,000 tickets. It's impossible. Now they've got 14,000 season tickets. So the building's full. The building's lively. Um, I know there's lots of places that, that look at them, uh, look at the way Carolina does things, and they're like, ah, oh, that's just the South. They don't get it. Like, 
it's Memorial Day in the States here. Mm. They'll be tailgating. It's about 2 o'clock here. They'll be tailgating now. <laughs> like, can you imagine what that place is going to sound like tonight? <laughs> and it's, it's they've built their own culture, or they've adapted their culture to a hockey team. And it's really, really interesting to watch. It's, it's fun. Like, you go into the building, there's zero chance that the people in there are not going to have fun tonight. And it's going to be loud, like loud, loud. And, and it's really, it's really kind of cool because there's a lot of years you came in and it just wasn't that. Hey, Ray, I want to ask you a Vancouver question. Uh, JT Miller, it's a big discussion in this city right now, Ray. You trade him or you re-sign him. Where are you sitting with uh, JT's future? Uh, I'm in not any rush to do, <laughs> to do the re-sign thing mm-hmm. because you don't have to. I, I, I mean, like... Really, you don't. Uh, I've, I've always been kind of interested in this trend over the last few years, Rick, that, um, and I don't know if it's five years or a little longer. A guy gets into the last year of his contract. He's got one year to go, and it's like the deadline becomes, you know, July 1st with one year to go. Well, why yeah. does it? You have all kinds of time. Where's it? What's not JT Miller? What's any player going to do? Are they going to quit? Like <laughs> you're under contract, you got to play. Yeah, you've got to play the last year of your contract. Now, whether they're going to trade Miller or not, I mean that's that's got nothing to do with the player at all. I mean, what what a year he had. You know what a what an imposing character on your roster. And if you're if you're making that move, it would be for some other reason, right? It's for cap right. and signability and you know, assets you could bring, bring back in a, in a different way. I mean, it's a, it's a tough spot for sure. It, it really is. But I, look, I, I will preface this by any time I talk about the Canucks now. Mm-hmm. I, I seriously know nothing. I have no idea. The, the barn door in, in the office gets closed and <laughs> what's behind there, I get no idea. And I never get told. Like, Never. I find out stuff on Twitter, yep. and I give Cammy crap. Mm-hmm. I'm like, "What? Well, you didn't even tell me that. And it's because I don't know. She doesn't want me to know. So I have no in, inside stuff to this. If I were managing, I wouldn't be signing him right now. I would be waiting, not through that I don't trust him or not through that I don't think he could do it again, but there's no rush. If you're going to make that decision to commit several years to a player of JT's age, I want to be sure that the rest of my roster fits in that time frame. But right. that's that's pretty tricky to do. Uh, Ray Tyler Mott, you've uh, had a bird's eye view of watching him here in the last uh, couple of weeks. Your thoughts on Tyler Mott in New York with the Rangers? Same thing he did in Vancouver. He's just wearing a different jersey, yeah. right? Skate, penalty kill, uh, energy, um, smart. Like it, it, it's the, there's a lot of guys, their games change when they go place to place. Uh, they just do. Um, I've seen no difference in Mott's game in New York than I did in Vancouver. And I liked it in Vancouver. I like it here. And the Rangers, you know, if you look at what the Rangers did from the beginning of last year, you know, they, they added Ryan Reeves, but he's there for, you know, to keep the flies off. But they added Barkley Goodrow. Yep. They um, they added Tyler Mott. They added Andrew Kopp. Like, they're all the same. Like, they're, they're different players, but they're all the same. They all kill penalties. They're all uh, firmer players. They all play direct games. And the Rangers felt that they needed to add that. So they went out and they target shopped. And, um, you know, Gerard Gallant was, was mentioning that, you know, when you get them back in the lineup – so Goodrow played last game too, the first game in 25 days. So two of their four penalty killers over the boards first are Cop and Mott, mm-hmm. and their fifth one, or Cop and Goodrow, and their fifth one is Mott. So like their penalty killers, three of them weren't here a few weeks ago. You know, it's really they've they've really all contributed um, in the way that the Rangers need them to. Hey, hey Ray, back 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 to the Canucks. Although we were talking about uh, uh, about uh, Tyler Mott there, uh, but but back to the Canucks and you know Cam- Cammy Granado aside, 
Um, we talked a lot through the years during the Jim Benning era about the no plan plan. Do you see right. a plan there with Canucks now? I do, and I think it's been pretty clearly articulated, is yeah, publicly anyway, is that mm. um, they're, they need to clear cap space. They need to have some roster flexibility. They need to be a better, um, have better depth through their organization. And the problem with that is none of it happens with the snap of the fingers. Yeah. But the, here's the trick. You can have that plan. You can't change it in six months. If you start to trade a veteran player or two and you acquire assets, at the deadline, you can't turn around and trade all those assets away. And then you're right back. You just push the ball down the road a bit. If you need to develop a system, develop prospects, you need to accumulate them. Now, you don't have to have 45 draft picks or whatever Arizona's got in the next three years. But if you're in a deficit draft position year after year, you're going to lose. You, you get seven draft picks per year. If you're drafting four players, how are you ever going to win? Yeah. Numbers like, are against you, you just can't. Mm -hmm. The numbers mm -hmm. are against you. And this is where the, the marriage between the plan and your drafting, and then the slowest part is your development has to be seamless. It has to be. That's If you look at the best team over the last three years, without question, it's Tampa Bay. So they have traded away first-round picks. The reason they're able to do that is because look at their roster. You could pull it up. The mid-round picks that they've hit on, mm -hmm. knock it out of the park. And then when they draft those guys, they park them in Syracuse for two years and they play and grow. And then they give them 10 games here and then they give them 15 games the next year. And then in the third year of their entry level contract, they're on the team point, uh, Palat, mm -hmm. Kalorn. Like you could just go up and down that roster. I think there's, I want to say there's seven guys, oh, Ross Colton, the seventh mm -hmm. round. Yeah. Yep. There's like seven guys after the third round on that team. Like that's depth of your organization. Ray, can the Oilers and Avs live up to the hype? And, and who do you like? Well, it's good. every game better be 6-5. <laughs> I mean, that's the hype, right? Like, we're all, like, super pumped, I think, to watch these two, you know, spectacular players in McKinnon and McDavid, and then with everybody else behind it. Like, is it even possible you could have 15 assists in a series and nobody talk about you? Yeah, exactly. Know. Like, dry yeah. Like, yeah. like, like, just... Ridiculous. I think the series will be wildly entertaining. Um, I always kind of, I respect and hold my breath at the same time watching Mike Smith play goal. Like I, you know, like he, he's brilliant. And then he just, Oh my God, did you look at that? Mm -hmm. And then he, but he's got this fighters mentality. Like he gives up a crappy goal and then like he just fights and claws and scraps. And I think Edmonton can play with them. I think Colorado's a deeper team. I think Colorado's better. Um, but in one series, can Mike Smith outplay Darcy Kemper? Is that going to be the difference? Can you somehow, like McKinnon and McDavid are going to get theirs. Can you somehow keep a handle on Kale McCarr? Yeah. Mm. He might, he might be the difference maker in this series. I wanted to talk about Guy Lafleur and Mike Bossy. We're, we're out of time, but uh, maybe we'll do that. Oh, you know what, Ray? Let's let, let's do it. Just you, this is the first time we've had you on since they passed. But you, your memories, and you would have played against uh, uh, Guy and Both Mike, 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 yeah. and just just, yep. just your memories of them on and maybe off the ice as well. Well, um, I didn't I didn't know either of them. Um, what I did know was as I got into the league, there were certain players you just I found myself just in warm-up, or even in the game when I'm sitting on the bench just staring at, and those were two of them. Like, it, you know, they did, they played the game so differently, but, like, I remember, like, Bossy, the, the sound when he shot, like the puck coming off his stick, right? And just, like, it sounded, like, heavy. It was a, there was a crack to it. And he was stronger and bigger than people might think. Like, he was... He was not getting pushed off the puck. Like, mm -hmm. that was not happening. And then Guy played with just such flair, even older or later in his career, right? I got a picture at home where I'll say battling for the puck, but I don't even really know if it's 
we're kind of standing there in the pucks there, put it that way. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm in a picture with Guy Lafleur. <laughs> like it, it's, it's I, I just, I, it, when I saw that picture, it just cracked me up because I'm like, oh my God, that's Guy Lafleur. Like these two gentlemen were, they were that. They were gentlemen. They were icons in the game. They were two of the very best scorers ever to play. And um, it just, it seemed, I don't know, just I, whatever age is as we get older, like it just seemed early and sudden yeah. and too close together for both of them. Yeah. I, yeah. I, the, game was, the game was blessed with those two, with those two guys. Yeah, agreed. All right, Ray, we could go on and on. Just great talking to you, and uh, maybe maybe in the near future, open up that barn door, give us a call, and uh, give us a scoop on, on, on the Canucks, <laughs> if you don't mind. By the, time, by the time I get the barn door open, uh, mm. Reese is in there, our 12-year-old, and there's usually like four empty bowls of cereal, a couple of <laughs> water glasses on the floor, and, you know, that's what I get to go in just to clean. Uh, I, I know that well. So does Rick. Ray, great talking to you. All the best. Have a good call tonight. Thanks very much, guys. Good to chat with you. We'll uh, catch up in the finals.